had to back it up every day. And like, it was just like, come on, man, no YouTube thumbnails. Like, Mm -hmm. especially something like that. We're not uncovering like like, another planet with NASA. Like there's just, (laughs) there's no reason. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today we're here with Julia Fletcher. Um, I think the second or third repeat guest now, which is pretty cool. And I was just about to tell you beforehand, I was listening back to some of the one that we did originally and it, it feels so long ago, but it doesn't sh- look that long ago on the dates, but looking at it, it feels like super weird. Was it like a year ago or when was that? I don't even yeah. remember. I think so because um, I just recorded one that isn't out yet, but it's like the one year anniversary and yours will be coming out like a few episodes after that. And you were like the third guest or something or third or fourth. Yeah, I do remember that. And I was like, damn, I remember thinking like originally I wanted to get you back on just because I feel like a lot has changed, but also... I felt like some of the early ones, like up till like maybe 10 or 12, I'm like, damn, I didn't do these any justice. Like my interview skills were <laughs> terrible. Like I want to kind of get some of them back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what have you, I guess, what have you kind of been up to in this past year since we last talked? Um, I've seen you do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a lot. I mean, I just moved. Uh, I made the move from Manhattan to Brooklyn. Um because like I needed my own space. I was living mm-hmm. with two other roommates, um, but I moved in with my boyfriend. So now we have like this office, which is beautiful. I've like never yeah, had my dope. own like desk set up before, um, but we're still like unpacking. It's really nice to like have my own space and like to put up all our art and just like have more of a breathing room to work because I was sleeping and living where I was working and working where I was sleeping and living in. I like hated mm-hmm. that felt like I was trampling on top of myself. Um, But that was like in the last month. But um, I got some jobs, quit some jobs, uh, (laughs) all that good stuff. Had had many, many clients. And uh, now we're here. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, what you said about the desk setup or just like having your own spots, crazy, like how much, I don't know, better that is for like productivity and just like feeling good because when I was doing it where like in college I'd pretty much like just roll like from my chair and the bed's like on the floor you know and then you just like go straight to it and it's really hard to separate I guess your life between like work and whatever the other part of your I guess just play or whatever it's called yeah I still haven't made like the full transition to like only using a desk for work like I'm still Mm -hmm. kind of sitting on the couch most days because I'm like before it was like I was pretty much exclusively working from my bed which was like not good (laughs) because I didn't have anywhere else to work um Mm -hmm. and it's just like hard to like completely just like sacrifice that comfort um and move to a desk but at least I have my nice Herman Miller you got the air on though yeah right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah so my back isn't hurting um yeah it's so important to have the nice chair i was uh when i I have like a steel case um leap and it was between this one and the the one that you're sitting in and i went to like a warehouse and tried them both and that one's like super hype and everyone knows about it but i ended up liking this one a little bit more yeah the only reason i got this chair was because like this guy we had to take like a bus like 40 stops no joke to like coney island to pick up this chair from this guy who's selling it for like 350 bucks Mm. and i was like why do you have so many chairs because he was selling like 10 and i was like what's the deal and i like checked the authenticity of it it's a real real herman miller but i was like why Mm. do you have so many and he's like it's just because everybody who worked here is working from home now yeah so i just sell selling the chairs and yeah, that's how mine was. I went to the guy in like a warehouse. He had like, yeah, the steel cases, the Herman Millers, and he had like yeah. a few other nice chairs. And I was like, what is this? Like, this is like super sketchy. sus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I supply chairs for like, yeah, like offices or whatever. And it was, this was like earlier COVID. And right when that happened, yeah, like everyone was giving, giving them up because, 
yeah, I think I only spent like 300 as well. And I tell people that and they're like, what the hell? Like, that's so much, but not in reality to like, or not in relation right. to the actual like retail or whatever. Yeah, I think, I think this chair is like, like a new one for one of the newer models is like 1500, which is yeah. absurd. I would never, it's ever, insane. ever, ever pay like a month's worth of rent for a chair. I, mean, I know. I mean, you could get like a shitty, super shitty car for that much money, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I was using, like I would sooner use my old like $30 Ikea chair than do that. Yeah. No now way. that you have the setup, are you still on the laptop or do you have like monitors? I and am stuff? still on the laptop. I don't have a, I'm hoping I can get an iMac. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I've just like, I've been so used to work on my laptop. I almost don't mind. Like when yeah. I had my really, really old job before I designed, started doing design anything, like all the peers that I worked with, they were like in their fifties and they were like, we have all these like we were just like in office and they're like, we have all these monitors, like, why aren't you using them? And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I grew up just using a laptop. I didn't have access yeah. to like a, a desktop computer to like do multi-screening stuff. So I feel like I'm very like just in the zone and very used to it. So it's not something I like really think about that and like using mm -hmm. a trackpad. Like I feel like using a mouse would be really weird. Oh, you like the trackpad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's like my least favorite part about use of the laptop. You could get one I of those like, like you big get used ones. To it. Have you seen those? Like the big, uh, the big trackpads, nah. like the Apple. I'll have um, to look into that. They're pretty dope. It's it's basically just like a standalone trackpad. So instead of having a mouse, that's cool. it's like a it's like a big ass square, and you can do all. But the, doesn't um, the trackpad become the mouse then if it's separated from the computer? Yeah, I guess it's still a, yeah. a mouse in a sense, <laughs> but it still like gives you that. I didn't know if you liked it because of like the gestures and all that shit. It still has all that, you know? Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like I was even doing like handwritten type stuff like in school, like in college for like photo books and stuff. Like I was drawing it on the trackpad. So I like yeah, still do that. Yeah, crazy. Um, Damn. That's like um, I when I interviewed a... Uh, that do like J crumb. He does like all this like illustration and stuff. And he tells me like, yeah, like I don't know how to draw without the trackpad anymore. Like it's part of my style, how the lines yeah. are all like wavy and shit. Cause he said yep. he'd be in like the tour bus drawing on the, trying to hold his like one part of his wrist on the trackpad to like stabilize it or whatever. Yeah. I eventually am hoping I can even like, cause I have, I have a really old iPad right now. I'm pretty sure it's like first gen like trying to update that from like i don't know what ios 7 to see yeah. if i can if i can use it for anything because it would be nice to sometimes like be able to open up photoshop on it and like mm -hmm. do something um but i don't know i feel like i'm so used to a laptop i don't know if i'm willing to upgrade a setup i'll yeah. have to think about it <laughs> it's really hard to like um like for better or for worse, I feel like a lot of designers and artists, they get like stuck in their ways, like because yep. you do something for so long and maybe like money wasn't available or you didn't even think about upgrading. And now that you can, yep. or if you hopefully can, you're just like, well, I don't even know where to begin, you know? Like I, I work on a desktop pretty much exclusively now, but when I first got it, all I could think about was like, well, then how am I going to go to like the coffee shop or whatever with my laptop and just sit there and covid i guess kind of prevented me from having to worry about that but it's it's weird i think once you do it though i think you'll if you actually got your stuff set up on a monitors and stuff i think you'd you'd uh, definitely like it after a while yeah so sometimes i'm like oh maybe i should just like completely ditch my laptop and just have my desktop because then it'll force me to only to use the desk there. to sit yeah. there until the work day is done and just like no bed sitting, no couch sitting, desk sitting. <laughs> so um, what kind of work are you doing for like, cause I know um, you're doing stuff with like Universal, right? Like the Universal, what is it called? Like Media Group or something like that? Yeah, UMG, it's for Barbada, which is their like subdivisions of their like merch company. Okay. Um, they do like 360 merchandise. Um, so it's like, kind of like one-off gigs every now and then, like they'll email, mm. um, be like, hey, we have this artist. 
uh, are you available for this project? Usually it's like a very quick turnaround, usually either like same day or next day. Wow. So you really have to, yeah, um, you really have to like be available. And most yeah. of the time, if you're not available, you will be available <laughs> because you make mm -hmm. yourself available. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're not like an employee there then. It's kind of just like no. a... No, I'm somewhat a, just like consistent a, freelance client or whatever. Yeah, freelance contract stuff like that. Okay, and that's um, and then you also do the vinyl stuff, right? With the, mm -hmm. are you an employee yeah. there, or is that also like a just a bigger? It's freelance also, client? I'm a contractor. Um, so those are my two main like freelance, um, employ and not even employers. I just call them employers because they're my main source of income. Right. Um, but yeah, so I, I do mostly like, there's only like three other people on the creative team. It's a pretty small company to begin with, but it's me mm -hmm. and my art director. And I'll just get like a, a lot of it social media stuff and social media graphics. So like the nice thing about that company is I feel like I have like a lot of say in like the overall design voice of like That's how we dope. present, how we present ourselves and our brands. Like, Mm -hmm. on Instagram and on TikTok, on anywhere. Um, I have a lot of like say in the overall visuals. So most of the Instagram stuff they put out is like stuff that I've made. So it looks a lot like the stuff that I made. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And sometimes I help a lot with like the packaging stuff if something comes up. It's really a mixed bag. Like really anything that comes up that the art director needs help with. I like jump on, which is fun. That's cool. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, like that's pretty like spot on. I feel like as you, as like a creative and just like the type of lane that you would want to be in, like, I always see you, you're always talking about vinyl and records and all that stuff. So like, and you're a designer, so it's kind of like a no brainer to be working with a company like that. But do you, um, were you already like not a fan, I guess. Like, were you already a subscriber of that platform? Um, I was for a little bit. Um, but then my boyfriend got a subscription because he had a lot of records. They released like a lot of um, like rap records, and he really likes, yeah. you know, like Outcast. Uh, am I? They had like a Young Thug pressing. Uh, mm. So he like really wanted all that. So he subscribed to the hip hop track. Uh, so we shared a membership. So, which is the cheaper option. Um, yeah. So like he had a membership for like a little bit. And so like, uh, yeah, it was, it was just like the household family, like mm -hmm. VMP subscription. Yeah. Yeah. It seems pretty cool. Like I, I've seen them do like cool shit. Yeah. Like with Wu-Tang and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm always like, I don't know. I never knew if it would be not worth it, but I guess like. I would al I was always afraid that like whatever the selection was that month, I'd be like, oh, I don't even like any of this. Oh, you can whatsoever. swap. You can swap oh, for yeah. a different track and for uh, here's me trying to like sell yeah, you marketing. our <laughs> subscription. Uh, yeah, you can swap. You can get store credit um, oh, to dope. get other exclusives. Yeah, they do a lot to like really keep you like. Yeah, but because I like create a lot because we do like a usually we'll announce like our records of the month, like in batches mm -hmm. of like three. So we've already announced everything that's going to come out until the end of the year. Um, oh, okay. So like I pretty much have all knowledge of like what we are releasing within the next year, mm -hmm. um, which is, I feel like I'm being trusted with such confidentiality. Yeah. Um, it's honor, honored, <laughs> but yeah. um, so like, I, we have a subreddit too, so it's like interesting looking at that and being like, I would sell my soul for this record. And I'm thinking in my head, like, little do they know, this Thursday we're repressing this. So like, <laughs> yeah. You just yeah. want to go almost go on there as like an anonymous and just drop <laughs> a little tip. <laughs> That's yeah, cool it's though. Always I, I, it's, it's always nice fun. It's always fun to just lurk. working and stuff. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, no, I was just saying it's always fun to just lurk on there, just see what yeah. people are saying. Some people are. I always, it's always weird too how there's like subreddits for everything, even stuff that doesn't even seem like it would have it or is very important. I'm always wondering like, is the actual thing making those or like fans making them? Like, they just pop up and sometimes they're popular and sometimes they're not popular at all. And you see ones with like 500 members or whatever. 
I think ours is fan made, um, but we have people who work at VMP like mm. respond to people and like we know about it and we read it. But Final Bros are intense. Like yeah. they're just not gonna say much else, but yeah, they're intense. Sure. <laughs> Especially like the like the first pressing people, you know, that get pretty like intense with it. I remember like. When I first got into the records, I, I didn't know shit and I like regret buying a lot of stuff I did because it's just like kind of bullshit, like repress things that are bad. And then I remember going on Reddit and just getting like destroyed by some guys. And then like for uh, it was a kind of whack because I was like, damn, these dudes care way too much. But then at the same time, I was like, all right, at least I kind of know now it helped a little bit. You know, I can know what to look for. Yeah. I, f- I feel like most of the stuff they talk about just like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if yeah. it really matters that much, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you get like all kinds of stuff like that on um, on like TikTok and shit like that. Because oh, everyone on yeah. TikTok like doesn't know anything. It seems like I get the craziest comments on there compared to like all the why, other I don't know why, but like for some reason, like the Venn diagram for like Reddit users and TikTok users is like a circle. Like people are just yeah. so mean. Yeah. For no reason. Like I think it it's because like, they have often, like but... uh, like TikTok and um for for it's good because they have like a good algorithm in that way but i think uh tiktok and reddit you see a lot more shit that you aren't like subscribed to or whatever you want to call it so like you're just like what the hell is this and like they're also opinionated because like you pop up on their for you page or whatever it may be yeah no that's a good way to put it because i get stuff i'm just like what is this doing on my for you page yeah um it's like sometimes I mean, it doesn't like happen often and I like don't even really remember much about them, but like sometimes you'll just get a comment and you're like, I can't believe anybody would actually say that to somebody like on the yeah. internet. Like that's yeah. so mean. <laughs> I love it when like I get a lot of comments on TikTok from like design. Um, I don't know. I call them the experts, you know, like you start attracting these yeah. like, experts that think they know what they're talking about. And uh they're always like telling you something like I guess it's in their opinion like constructive criticism but I think the reason it bothers me is because it's not even good like yeah. I, it's already annoying to just get like so much like whatever you call it like unsolicited feedback but when it's like you don't respect it either you're kind of like just shut up like what is what does this even mean like I had I was doing something with like exacto knife in every I had like 30 comments like you know you could just mask that out in Photoshop and I'm like yeah I know but I want to do it this way for a reason it's like yeah thanks smart ass I know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do you think that those because I've seen you and a few other designers on TikTok do like relatively well with either it be like more of your own like personal expression or like design stuff and music and whatever but do you think that it's actually a good or like platform for people that do design like do you think people should actually care about it i guess and like try to build on it i mean i think it's a really great platform like i've Mm -hmm. been thinking about it a lot because i actually just got a question like yesterday that was like are you ever going to come back to youtube or do youtube videos i think tiktok right now is like the most accessible social media platform Mm -hmm. like it's literally like you film youtube on your phone and then you edit an app and i feel like you're so much more content is pushed onto your for you page you don't have to go looking for it so Mm -hmm. like if you show interest in design tiktok is going to show you like 20 more videos of like stuff that is kind of similar so like i'll get design stuff all the time either from people who have hundred thousand likes on a video or a hundred and it's just like yeah it's more like uh fair i guess they're like algorithm or whatever i always see people commenting like on my stuff like uh whatever the subject is like i did like that turnstile uh uh what do you call album art like design time lapse or whatever you want to call it and everyone was like i'm commenting so i could be on like turnstile tiktok or whatever and like i was like super new to it and i was like what the hell are they even talking about but (laughs) that's just like i guess what people call every like niche that exists on there it's kind of funny 
but that just yeah. shows that it probably works right if you start engaging with that stuff it'll show you it'll show yeah. you more of it i'm on um burn talk so i'm on david burn tiktok i'm on uh, yeah i'm on pavement tiktok uh there's another like niche tiktok i'm part of that people will come as it's like yes finally i'm on the side you, of tiktok what do you think other than like i guess from like uh their kind of more like fair algorithm or like the way the platform's built i think it is a positive thing but do you think i always feel like what am i supposed to do on there do you think that it's a good platform for designers that like like most of us do like 2d and shit you know so it's kind of like uh-huh. what are you supposed to do other than like if you don't want to do a tutorial it feels sometimes like there's not many options you know yeah i struggle with that which is why i like have not done much on TikTok is because yeah. I don't want to film or record myself doing a time lapse of the design because most of the time it takes way longer than that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have experimented before with just like going through the different layers and like de- deconstructing the layers of like a poster, but like it doesn't really make sense in the long run. Mm-hmm. It's better to just see like a time lapse. Um, but some people do like quick tutorials or something i've had like good success with like showing little bits of like photoshop hacks or like design things that i do and that have done really 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 well um and Mm -hmm. something i'll probably end up doing is i have a whole box in my closet of like photo and design books i made in college i'll probably start a series of like going through and talking about which each one is about um Mm. just to keep it like kind of simple um so it's not necessarily a tutorial and it's not like a time lapse of anything it's just kind of like showing off college work or like portfolio work so it's like more relatable because i feel like a lot of my audience is also people who are still studying design and in college um Mm. so they could see like kind of the progression of how things have changed since i've left college and also i think I think like a really big like grounding point for me is like I went to school for something else. So I like talking about that a lot. Mm. Um, So I made a few TikToks about that. Just being like, I went to school for photo. I know nothing. Yeah. But now I design for these artists. And I think also like catching on to like trending sounds and using it in a way that's like that makes sense. Like in a design way that's like quick and you like show off something of your work. Um, I've mm-hmm. gotten a few gigs that way too. Um, That's so tough. I feel like it's like an infinite possibility. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's also yeah, like you have a good, um, I guess, like relatable origin story for a lot of people that may have like imposter syndrome or, or anything like that. And um, I found like I've the ones that I have actually done the best is like. I guess how you said it, like deconstructing the layers or whatever, like those are my ones that have probably done the best. But like you said, it's hard to do it in real time. Like it's definitely like fake in the sense that I'm going back and like redesigning it for the video. Cause when I'm making stuff, it's really hard for me to think like, all right, every step I'm going to pull out my phone and like record me, like looking through fonts or whatever it is. But yeah, I think the platform's good for um, not only, like itself but then just using it to like connect more with an audience and then maybe you can send them to other places you know instagram Mm -hmm. has my work twitter has like my thoughts or whatever and then youtube i have videos and things like it seems like it has the best algorithm so kind of might as well try to use it and get people to the other ones even if you like the other platforms more yeah yeah i have no idea like, I, I think I've seen, like, a few, but and even, like, Instagram is, like, favoring reels right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of other, like, creators, uh, like, interaction and insights have been down. But then they're like, oh, I've been mm-hmm. posting my TikTok reels on Instagram, and they've been doing a lot better. And I was like, well, I don't know if I have enough design stuff yet to post, you know, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Hoping the I'll real it stuff, it, it sucks because, like, I don't necessarily think they're, like, super fun to make all the time. But 
yeah like i know like some of like the, my most talented design friends like their reach or whatever is like just garbage and it's like kind of frustrating to see because i'm like damn like these people are like really dope and they're not getting any love because they're not like posting everyday reels and all kinds of shit like that like they really for instagram being like dying or whatever people say and like everyone like complaining about it they really don't seem like they're like they care that much that people are mad they're just doing whatever they want it seems like yeah i'm mad that instagram has as much of a grip on me as it does because i feel like it I can't keep up with like my actual website portfolio right now. So I've just been like using Instagram exclusively as a portfolio. I still have a website, yeah. but it's just like uh, you have to sit down and update your website. And that's just like too much work. I know. So I feel like just Instagram is like a great way to like reach other people and like connect with other people. So if Instagram goes down, I'm going down, which <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I it, hopefully I mean is not the case but for real it kind of is like a lot of people's portfolios like i know people that even like i talked with these uh two dudes like obi and japari recently and they are like super respected and they work with like all these huge clients and they don't even have a portfolio site like they work with nike and all this stuff like just through instagram and that's it all their site is is like for selling prints or whatever and yeah like i feel like people like to complain about it but then every time it goes down and shit they're on twitter like talking about how instagram doesn't work anymore so it yeah, obviously still I, has a grip on their life i mean i hope we get to the point where like instagram is like an acceptable form of like a portfolio link because it's expensive mm -hmm. to have a website mm -hmm. so yeah it's good from an accessibility standpoint for sure yeah I've been wanting to update my portfolio for like, not just the content, but I've been wanting to like design it differently for like three years and I just can't be bothered to like start. Rebrand all the time. Ugh, it yeah. never stops. That's what's cool about the Instagram. It's like, you just look at the last six posts and you're like, that's my rebrand, you know? Like that's kind of yeah. what I'm doing mm -hmm. now. And I don't the rebrand is constantly there. Yeah. You don't have to like, you don't have to like re redesign like the layout their format of like the website change the bio any photos like it's just right there yeah it's just the work what um i wanted to ask you a, a bit about so you said you work with the vinyl and then the universal group those are like your two main clients and then mm -hmm. you're still just doing like projects that come in right just as like a freelancer mm -hmm. so yeah. um how, what do you think are the some of the pros and cons of like those ones that are more like a job kind of in a sense because they're more consistent versus like just being working with different clients all the time like as a as in like if i didn't have like the stability yeah, of like, like do two you main like clients. do you like that having those like same clients because it's more like kind of I like do. a job but not really at the same time yeah, I, I do because it still allows me enough time. Like I'm still seen as a freelancer, so I'm not expected to be 100% devoted my attention to them yeah. at all times. And I'm allowed to go and work on other things. Um, so like for VMP, I don't even work full time every week. I work mm -hmm. maybe 20 to 30 hours depending on the demand. Um, and it's always based around my schedule. Like they always base the work around like what I'm working on outside of the work. So like if I, mm -hmm. they're like always like, do you have time to work on this? Like, are you free during the morning of this time so we can have a meeting? Um, and it's just really nice that way because if I wanted to step out for two hours to do something, mm -hmm. I could. I'm not like a slave to the computer where right. I was making thumbnails. It's just like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. I have to be on duty all the time on the laptop. Yeah. Whereas I feel like I have more breathing room. Um, so I kind of get like the best of all worlds because I've got the two main like stability clients where I know like I will have income every month and I won't have to worry about that. And but then I can also have like a bunch of random miscellaneous gigs, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I feel like having that yeah, like it is like a win-win, like you're saying. And I feel like having that um, like half stability or whatever you want to call it allows you to not be as like, uh, how do I word this? Like when you have that, you're probably going to be a lot more picky and like take on quality clients otherwise rather than 
I've had times where I don't have something like that and I don't have other income that's coming in. And then you do projects that you would otherwise not do if you weren't in that situation. And then you're just like, this sucks. Like that's the only bad part I feel like about freelancing is when you do things you really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a huge privilege to be able to say no to something. I've definitely been in that spot where I've taken like the worst possible gig I could have taken mm -hmm. for like the cheapest amount of money. Yeah. And I just like, well, I need this $200. Uh, yeah, I'll design a whole campaign for $200. Like yeah. just ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I, I like need that... to get better at saying no to projects because like, even now I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do mm -hmm. that. Like I say yes to everything because I'm like, oh, I want something to do and I would like to get paid and like all yeah. that. So. I go between the two ideas like sometimes I I'm like really think like only good stuff like I have I'm so lucky to be able to yeah like turn down all these shitty projects and then other times I think well why don't I just design this poster for this guy's event when I'm just gonna make one for free to put on Instagram you know like it's right. weird you go you go between the two ideas but I just feel like you want them to you almost want the client to know like I'm hooking you up though just know it so don't be covered with me with like hella revisions if i'm gonna do it for this sheet yeah i'm always yeah. like so worried if i'm like working on a client's project and they see me like posting like a for fun thing on instagram if they think i'm like ignoring them or like mm -hmm. working on something other than their work and it's like i promise i've had this in the wraps for a while i'm not ignoring you <laughs> yeah do you um I always see like I feel like um, music industry specifically because you you work a lot in there. Um, I've seen with they have like some of the dopest opportunities as well as some of like the worst clients that I've heard stories from and things. Especially like uh, I don't know, just maybe some independent artists that are like uh, what's the word? Like maybe like ignorant to the idea of like what something should cost and things. But how do you go about? Um, like showing the value in design rather than just being like, oh, here's, we just want cover art. Like, do you try to sell them on like entire campaigns and things like that? Or like different things that you can add in to, I guess, sweeten the package or whatever? Well, usually I haven't really thought about that. I'm going to start doing that though. Usually I'll just <laughs> do whatever they tell me to do. Yeah. Um, but I am usually like, I try not to let people lowball me. Like usually if we are having a conversation, I will be the one to bring up, by the way, my price for this is this. And like, I specifically have like a very hard ass contract now where I'm like, I say yeah, in an same. email when I send it over where I'm like, please read this over and email me any questions that you have mm -hmm. about this. And people have done that. It shows me that they've read it because i many other times it's, with like the things that people mention it's like okay you clearly didn't read it mm -hmm. so um yeah but i always try to like <laughs> before taking on like any project be like this is what i usually charge for this it's like if you don't have the budget for it it's probably not gonna work um mm. i have definitely in those past several months have had that problem just like working on people are like oh can we get this package deal for this amount of money and i'm like well actually it, it would look the price would look more something like this um mm -hmm. so based on like your budget that's like cutting it in half of like what i would usually do right. and here and here is what i usually offer and what i bring to the table and why that's important and why that's reflected in my price um mm -hmm. in which case when you start to kind of do that you kind of feel like a boss bitch a little bit because you're yeah. like they're like yes this is my price yes i might be turning down money but i know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah and you never like uh you never know how it's gonna turn out too i have clients where they say yo can you do this like logo for like super cheap i don't know like uh, sub 500 right for like a whole brand identity or something and i'm just mm -hmm. like no like that's not going to work for this. And then sometimes they're like, you know, 
whatever, like, oh, whatever, like, I'll just go to my cousin or whatever they, they're going to say. And then other times, I think they just don't know. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I thought that was, uh, like, that was good. And then you tell them and they're like, sure, yeah, like, that price is cool. So I feel like I see a lot of people complain sometimes about clients. And then I always try to tell them, like, sometimes they just don't know, you know, like, how would yeah. they know if they've never worked with a creative, like, either as a designer, photographer, like, I don't know how much shit costs if I were to hire someone to like, I don't know, like redo like a floor or something in the apartment. So they would yeah. just tell me and I'd be like, oh, that's a lot, but all right, fine, you know, or whatever. Yeah, no, totally. I just, I have that problem all the time. I forgot what I was going to say, but it had to do with that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I don't know, I think. I think it's, a, I always go back and forth between like when I see how people, designers interact online about like clients, I'm like, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, like we need to be respected. And then other times I'm like, these people just, all they do is complain about clients. And it's like, the clients are the reason you're getting money. So it's kind of if like a weird balance. If it's people who like work, I, I feel like I give more leeway to people who um, aren't creatives or like within the industry I work in because mm. maybe they truly have no idea. But if they are like managers or like they work at a label and they've like That's done this true. before and you're just trying to get some cheap work, it's like, yeah, I'm looking at you and I'm like, you know what you're doing. Yeah, especially so. if it's like uh, they do something, yeah, like even more than like a manager, like if it's like a photographer or something like trying to hire you, you're like, damn, like you should know what's up. Like you'd probably deal with the same like stuff I, all the time. Yeah, one of the worst experiences I had with like kind of like a design job scam was like a few years ago where like somebody had me do like an entire campaign for like a really cheap money, but like I needed the money. And it was mm -hmm. just crazy that like, it went down the way that it did because I was like, you're literally like created person. Like, I don't understand how we got to this point. Um, yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. Yeah. I, that's like, I always am hesitant to work with uh, like people I know like super well, unless they're, it's like a collaboration that's different. But if it's just like someone I know well, that's not a creative or, or is, but they're like my friend, I'm always like, I don't know, like if something bad happens, like this is gonna suck and then you're, I'm gonna feel bad for just respecting myself towards you, you know? Yeah, but definitely. You never know, really. Like, um, I wanted to ask you too about, so I, I think I talked to you about this a little bit like the first time you came on, but it's, it's obviously stayed true. Like I'm looking at some of your recent stuff. You've even further solidified like this, um, I, just, I don't even know how to, what I would call it, but like, I guess like pop art, um, colorful style in both your like interior design, clothing and graphic design work. And I'm curious, do all clients now kind of come to you with that expectation or do you still get clients like wanting some shit that you're just like, this is nothing like I would do? Um, well, it's gone to the point where I'll only take on clients that like, mm want to work within my style if they want okay. a graphic design that's completely malleable like you can find somebody else i'm not the designer for that you mm. came to me because you want the way that i work yeah. so usually it, it will be people that'll email me and be like i like these certain things you've done and like will link me to instagram posts um like i just had a client that was like we really like the stuff you did for billy eilish like we could have something like that oh, okay um and it's just like, it's it's easier that way for me, for my portfolio, for them, because they get something that I'm good at. I know I'm good at. Um, so usually, as of like recently, if, it, if you asked me like two years ago, I'd be like, no, I'll do anything, everything. Yeah. But now I'm just like super selective. Unless it's like uh, anything for UMG, in which case they have they will send like mood boards and like specific prompts of like kind of what they're looking for. Right. In that case, you kind of got to like, you know, for like client stuff, but that you're working for like big names. So you're kind of like, yes, I will do this. Right. I will change up my style for that. Um, but other than that, people who like email me directly mm -hmm. are usually like looking for my particular style of work. Yeah. It's also like, so yeah, like you said, it's like nuanced, you know, if it's this huge client or if the money's like super high, you, 
it, there's different yeah there's different factors that come into play to like changing your style or whatever I, i've worked on projects that paid super well but like I'm, no one's ever gonna know about them because i didn't even like the like vibe that we had to end yep. up going with you know so but you're just like whatever that one's just like that's a rent paid right there you know it's not a portfolio piece yeah, there's nothing worse than like creating something you really like that's like in your style and then they like change it completely completely and they're like say they change it and you're like, I don't even want to put this anywhere now. <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> or like when you I've worked with clients before I kinda had this part ironed out in my contract too, where like they fuck up my shit, you know? Like I give it to them oh, and no. then I see it on like I don't know, like not the source file, but like I've done, um, like, I guess like the way they just, I've done like branding projects where the way they applied it to different assets, like social media and stuff. I'm just like, you didn't even like, you must've not even looked at like the kind of identity guidelines I set. Cause this doesn't look anything like what we all agreed upon when we did the presentation. And then you're just like, whatever, like it's out of my hands. Just don't tell anyone that I made these banners yeah. on Twitter that look like shit. You know? <laughs> The first time I made a brand usage guide, I was like so specific. I was like mm -hmm. putting in what what other people would think is like common sense, but some people really don't know. It's like, do not stretch the logo. Do not yeah. change the color. Do not minimize it and shrink it and pull it. And it's just like. Yeah. My favorite is where you have to put like, do not put like a picture inside of the logo. That's like a crazy ass pattern or some oh shit. Like God. I'll just find the wildest shit and I'll use that as the example. Cause I'm like, this is the extreme, but there's also minor offenses or whatever you want to call it that are the same. Yeah. It's wild. How do you, um, cause I've seen you talk about it and Kel and a few other people that work specifically in music it seems like uh i see it in in tech too but a lot of music with like ndas and all that stuff and um like do you find that sometimes you feel like you're not able to show some of your best work or attract new clients because you're not able to tell anyone about it yeah i mean <laughs> nda is pretty much on me at this point especially for UMG. So it's like, mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm tiptoeing around that subject. But there have been like a ton of clients that I have like either worked on or gotten approvals for, for them specifically, where you just like can't talk about it unless you get like permission of some sort, which I'm very lucky that like I even got permission to like, t to even talk about and post Rolling Stones or like Billie Eilish, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but NDAs, abolish them they suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm working within one right now and it's like Ugh. a totally different vibe from music because it's like some software stuff so it's like they're just like no we don't want anyone to take our idea it's like that type of vibe but i'm just like damn it like why does this even matter like no one even knows what this is like no one's gonna right. take the idea like i just want to show the people the logo and stuff you know like it's weird yeah. i feel like it needs to be like I'm not totally like opposed to the idea of it. Like as a business owner or whatever, I'd probably want someone to sign one if I had some crazy invention or whatever. But I would also think it should be like a little bit more nuanced. Like I don't think the designer being like, I did this has anything to do with the performance of the product or the right. album. Plus or whatever. like they wouldn't have anything without us. <laughs> Just slap yeah. on the face. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Uh, and that's like, I've seen uh, you talk about it, I think, and Cal talk about it as well. Like people being like, oh, they made this or whatever. And you're just like, stop. They're going to get mad at me. Oh, much. my God. Yeah. Like that. Uh, that it's happened kind of bittersweet. With, yeah. That happened with redacted artists um, <laughs> where like I had like talked about it and like made posts about it. And uh it, like got some traction and then I kind of got like a slap on the wrist for it I had to like take it down and then like I would just like tell my friend they'd be like oh my god what like what happened to your post and I was like oh, I got in trouble for it and so then mm. they'd like make some vague tweet it's like tag the artist to be like love this work done by my friend or like so and so I'm like you gotta take it down like yeah mm, people are gonna see it like just just 
don't <laughs> appreciate yeah. the support, but it can happen. I know it's it's like it's hard because it's like from an outside perspective, you're like, yo, like thank you, that's dope. And yeah, like, it's cool to see people being like, oh, like show love and give credit. But then if you don't know like the full story, you're just like, yo, I'm gonna get even in more trouble if you keep tagging like adding this person like 10 comments or whatever yeah i had to like message a few people be like can you delete this because i'm scared (laughs) Mm -hmm. have you um i guess like you don't have to answer this fully if it's uh not allowed or, or whatever it may be but um have you ever gotten i guess like not I guess you haven't probably gotten the full extent of like what can happen with like messing with NDAs but have you ever gotten uh I guess just in trouble like in terms of but what you didn't know like you didn't know you were supposed to not post about it yeah um (laughs) uh all right I'm trying to think of like I'm gonna yeah I yeah (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to like talk about it. Um, no, it's all good. With no, no, no. I mean, like with UMG, I had, I had unknowingly breached uh, mm. some privacy stuff, but that's because it wasn't really explicitly outlined um, in the contract, and so I genuinely didn't know. But mm-hmm. it was a very scary situation. Luckily. We're all on good terms now. We understand what's going on. And I'm sure I'm not the one and only person who has done that. Um, and they either posted right. about something they shouldn't have or like needed to get permission for something. Um, but uh, people breach NDAs on accident. It happens. Like, so I really wish like more NDAs and like more contracts were like more accessible to like read because of the convoluted mm-hmm. like stuff sentences sure. and like paragraphs don't make sense um and so like you have to email back and forth and be like can you clarify what this means because mm-hmm. i was under the impression that so and so blank 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 and that was genuinely like my situation where i like didn't know so yeah i have people like living out here i have a lot of friends that work uh as like you know like camera people and PAs and whatever and all kinds of movies and things and like I feel like I just like people breach NDAs to me like every weekend I hang out with them they're just like we're working on whatever and I'm just like I'm like nothing's gonna happen for me but I feel like you gotta chill because I'm sure if people in the design and like tech community have came after me for NDAs get mad then Hollywood's gonna be like a whole different mess that's gonna if you ever get in trouble or whatever Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You just, like, go around, tell everybody, I'm working on this new film. It's coming out on this date. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, I mean, it's Uh, exciting. You want to talk about it. You're like, I'm part of this cool thing. Why can't I talk about it? But I don't know. And then I've had experiences where it's, like, uh, I don't know what the correct term is, but, like, when it's up, when the NDA's up or, like, done with or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's like I don't even care anymore, you know. They're just they're just like, oh, you're good to go. Like I'm like, it's been two years. Like I don't even know if I, like, I wouldn't even make it this way now, you know. So I'm like, I'm not even gonna post about it or whatever. Yeah, my old job uh, when I was working and doing like YouTube thumbnails for brands, like they cared so much about like confidentiality mm-hmm. that like we had like separate laptops with separate servers and like. We had to back it up every day and like it was just like come on man they're youtube thumbnails like Mm -hmm. especially something like that we're not uncovering like like, another planet with nasa like there's just yeah (laughs) there's no reason (laughs) yeah that's how it was when i worked at this agency we did like i worked on a few like disney things and man like that shit was intense like anything we printed and like any we had to like shred it and like We had to have, when that project was going, we had to have different, like, um, like specific security systems, like, to the office and, like, swipe in cards and shit just because Disney was, like, associated with the, as, like, a client. And it's just crazy to, I mean, I don't know. It's just just insane. Like, they acted like we had the key to the universe or something and like no one could ever figure out about this movie that's coming out in 2028 or whatever it was and it's just so crazy because like the people 
who are like involved with NDAs and like want to share that work with their audience. Mm -hmm. Their audience doesn't care, you know, like they're not, they're not just like all the things that are outlined in an NDA. It's like this possible thing could happen and we don't do like, we keep the secret for this reason. I'm like, well, Mm. audience probably doesn't even care and probably don't even know about that or have not considered that viewpoint. Um, Mm. So what's the problem? (laughs) Yeah. And like, uh, especially as like a designer, your audience wants to like, they probably care a lot more about what you were involved in and what you designed rather than like the actual subject matter or whatever the product is or the artist or like, I'm sure there's crossover, you know, like if you design something for an artist that a lot of your demographics, like fan, fan base is fans of, then it's like more risky or whatever. Like, I'm sure there's people that like you that also like Billie Eilish. That's just like, it's probably super obvious, but if you're just doing like some poster or whatever for something that they had never even heard of, they're not going to go around like investigating it and like right. try to, I don't know, figure out more or whatever. But it's also just um, crazy. Cause like it's free promo. <laughs> that's like the craziest thing. Like, yeah. it, that's true. like if I do merch for something and I want to post about it, it's like, I'm saying, Hey, I made this merch, go buy it. I'm giving mm-hmm. you, I'm literally giving you more money. That's just insane. That makes yeah, no sense. That's true. Cause, um, there's obviously situations where the artist is bigger than the, the brand or the, um, or the other artist of whatever the work was done for. Cause I mean, I've worked with clients where I, I, they're definitely like some big ass thing that it's like me, me saying I did it isn't going to influence like the, the revenue or whatever. But then, yeah, I'm sure there's situations on the other hand where you work with a super small artist or something and then you have a pretty devoted, I feel like fan base that likes your stuff. They're probably going to want to just buy it because you made it right. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> Who knows? I would think like at least <laughs> I don't know if at that's least ever like happen, but I'm sure that happens and I'm sure that's a thing because people like I don't know like I feel like people that have solidified styles like you're a good example. I feel like you have um the more solidified your style is and the more that people feel they can relate to you, the more likely you are to have like that whole thousand true fans like concept dialed in where they'll kind of just support anything that you do because you're doing it, not because of what it is. Well, if that's true, that's crazy. I can't wrap <laughs> my mind around that. Yeah. I mean, do you, uh, I, I've, how do you feel about, so I've talked to people that I feel like have a decent following on any types of different social medias. And so I've been seeing, like, I didn't really know about this till like the last year, but this whole idea of like parasocial relationship or whatever you call it. And, mm-hmm. um, do you feel that that's like, how do you kind of navigate that? Like with, cause I always feel like I want to be cool with everyone and message everyone back and talk with them, but then I don't want to be so accessible that it's like, eventually I'm going to have to be like, leave me alone, you know? Right. Yeah. I have a problem where I'm a little too friendly. Yeah, um, me too. And I need to get better at boundaries because sometimes it's not that I don't like somebody or like been purposefully ignoring their message i just like cannot mentally handle it with where Mm -hmm. i am in my life right now or what i'm doing or what i'm working on and i do feel and i'm sure kel feels the exact same way because we've had conversations about it it's like Mm. it's not like trauma dumping but people will like message you like their whole like you know career story like i'm in school i'm doing this and i you're reading it you do read all of them but like you don't know how to respond And like, but you feel obligated to respond because they took the time to like write you this whole message, but like you don't really know what to say and you don't feel like you're really in the place to say anything. And it's just like scary. (laughs) I'm always hesitant. Like I'm all for like good, um, like good dumps. And it's just like, hell yeah, like thank you, you know, and they're, they're just super nice or whatever. But sometimes people ask me for advice, which I don't really know like what to do because I like to try to give advice on things I feel like I know enough about to give advice on, but then I also don't want to feel like, um, 
someone's going to take my opinion and do it and then something bad's going to happen and they're going to be like, yeah. yo, you told me not to go to college or something or like whatever. <laughs> and then I'm just like, well, I didn't know. I just said that you could try it or you should. I, I'm always like very, I, I feel like sometimes I become too like wishy-washy because I'm just like, someone's like, what do you think about going to like design school? And I'm just like, you should go. It's cool. But if you don't want to, like don't. And then they're just like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Don't base your entire life around somebody's opinion on the internet. I get that mm-hmm. like stories are helpful and like experiences are helpful. I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's too much influential power. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you still get. Because I didn't even go to. I didn't even go to school like for design. So anytime somebody messaged me, is like, I'm thinking about going to design school, or like, I'm thinking about dropping out and just teaching myself. I'm just like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I can't. Yeah, you have that video too that got like hella views. The. the it's like your, art you, yeah art school right or photo school or whatever and like i'm sure you still get comments on there that are exactly of this opinion or or like yeah. or this subject oh my god yeah it's actually like it's not too much anymore but at first it was just like this is relatable like i'm going through the same thing would you mm-hmm. recommend blah 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 and i'm like i really wish i could help you but i can't even I'm just, I think of myself as somebody who's really bad at giving advice. I love, I would love to give advice and to help other people, but I mm-hmm. genuinely feel like I'm not in the place to do it yeah. unless somebody has like my exact same experience. It's like they're going through the exact same thing that I've been through and I'm going through. I feel like I can't speak on it. Also, I feel like Steph's so like nuanced and just like deep that whatever I say is like not going to justify it. Like, I would need to talk to you like for a long time to like fully give my, you know, it had to be like something like this, right? I mean, I'm not just gonna like talk on calls with people for for free for no reason and just just to give them advice all the time. But I feel like if you write something, the internet it's so hard to convey like, um, not sarcasm, but I guess like any type of, uh, like emotion or whatever on the words so it's easy to just be like okay that's truth because it was written down and there's no like if ands or buts about it and it's just it's that but i don't know it's a, I, i'm not saying i get all these people hitting me up for advice but it's definitely happened in the past like six months more since i've gotten a little bit more followers and things like that yeah i got a question yesterday that was like how do you get yourself into a like-minded community or like create a community of Mm. people who design like you and I'm like I literally have no idea you've like opened (laughs) my third eye and I'm like really doing some reflecting right now because I don't even know how I got here (laughs) yeah that's true my hardest question that I feel like is to get is when people say things just like oh no like they're like so generic that it just like yeah like gives you like an existential crisis crisis because you're just like geez they're just like we're um like what do you why do you like do what you do kind of type of question you're like, you're like jesus uh, christ like i don't know how to unpack all this i think in a in a normal way but i don't know i think that's it's hard because that's the that's also the cool thing about the internet you know that you can talk to like-minded people and stuff i just think I've learned as my own, um, as a fan of other people and people that are inaccessible to me, not to expect too much if I try to reach out to them or anything like that, you know? Yeah, I I don't know. I I think I'm like totally cool with where I am in my career right now. Like, to be honest, I don't want to grow anymore because I'm just like, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want people yeah. looking up to me in that way and expecting stuff from me because I can't deliver. I'm just a person mm-hmm. who has a lot of flaws and I'm like still trying to work on it. And I just, I feel like that's so overwhelming for me. Yeah. Um, so I just don't think I could do it. I like, I like posting about the experience. I like helping a small amount of people, but I think any bigger than right now would be a lot. Yeah. You're also one of the types of designers. Like I, I feel like the people that do graphic design online fall into like a few categories that I've kind of 
like assign them or whatever. There's people like you where you have a specific style, but you're also you like people follow you for you because you post pictures of yourself like semi often or whatever. You also talk about your stories and things. And then there's people that are like the same thing, you know, they're, they're things almost like a, there it's just a portfolio you know it's a curated like it's yeah. almost like a tumbler or something you know and then there's other people that are like these really dope designers but they don't even really post anything because they work at like a studio or something and they're just like rare and pop in and out and I feel like those are the three that I've kind of seen online and it seems like the one that's more like you is the type of person that get would feel the easiest to approach because you're also putting yourself out there rather than just your work yeah, I I used to have like a personal Instagram and I used to try mm. to separate the two from like brand or like work and personal, but I was like, wow, my brand and like my work is me. So like, yeah. I don't want to separate that. So exactly. if you're hiring me and you're looking at my work, I want you to see all parts of me. And if you don't like all parts of me, I don't want to work with you, like mm -hmm. <laughs> essentially. Yeah. And I came to that conclusion and after like, getting rid of my other one or like making it inactive. I was just like, it's like less stress of having to try to keep the two identities separate. Yeah. And I mean, it's funny that we're even talking about this because I'm looking at your uh, thing right now and I forgot how your whole thing's like no DMs or whatever. So <laughs> the fact that you, you have a problem with getting a lot of messages is funny considering you blatantly say like, don't. I can't even imagine if you didn't have that there. How crazy well, it would be. Well, DMs in general, fine. DMs about work that For should work, be an email, yeah. not acceptable. It's like, <laughs> I tell, it's like, I always say this to people. I say, always put that in your bio because if they can't read that and they message you, you don't want to work with them. They can't even read your bio. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they, they just can't read. Yeah, that's They it. can't read, so why work <laughs> with them? That's so true. I, I, I don't um I don't write no DMs, but I always do like the I guess the more uh, active version of that is anytime they tell me I go yo like here's the email even though I have it I say here's the email send me the same thing if you want you know whatever but like I want it over yeah. there and you know what maybe like eighty percent of them probably don't. I never get an email right. from them and I go, good. They probably sucked. That would have been a shitty yeah. project. Yeah, because you know? like Instagram is so immediate. Like you could send a message and within 15 minutes be like, oh, I kind of regret doing that. But email feels more like formal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, I'm making a serious decision to reach out to this person to hire them. Plus it email is very like work related. Right. It's like Instagram, Instagram and like being online and on social is like very much not work to me. I'm mm -hmm. sharing part of my life and like my work online, but it's not, it's not where I want my work inquiries to be. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's just a different vibe. Yeah. Like people aren't going to, people DM me, yo, like I'm trying to get some design work. Like that's the, it's the like, full okay. <laughs> sentence. It's I'm trying to get some design work and I'm just like, all right, no all one's right. going to email me that. It's like, hello, Jesse Nyberg. Like, I would like to inquire about this project. I'm like, all right. Like, it's kind of like, it's also weird that it's so formal, but I'm like, good. I'd rather it be this way than like that trying to get design work type shit. Cause yeah. I don't know. I like, I also like it from just a like org organizational standpoint. I like stuff yep. being in the, the, the buckets of like whatever they should be in. I like work things in here. Like, yeah. Um, like, uh, that's why I hate it. I didn't like using Discord at first because I use it now for a lot of my own server and also like design um, community stuff because it was always like my gaming thing and separate from work and like just fun. And now it's all meshed together and it's kind of that's like my digital version of you saying that you didn't want your room and to be in the same work as like the desk. But that happens online now, too. Yeah, I think like breaking up your digital spaces and like setting boundaries online is like important because social media is supposed to be social and like fun. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you use it for business too. But I like specifically state in my contract now, like just because you see me online doesn't mean I'm online for work. It means that I'm a person mm -hmm. 
just just trying to interact and like share things. That's a it good doesn't point. mean that I'm working. So like if somebody will text or email me at like 10 p.m. It's like asking for something. It's like, yeah, you might have seen me post a story like five minutes ago, but that doesn't mean I'm going to email you back right now. Yeah. So they, they see like the, what is it? Like the green, the green yeah. little like light or whatever. And then they're it's like freelance like, doesn't mean I'm available online 24 seven. Yeah. Like, that's like that. I, I kept seeing these memes go around where it was like that old, you know, that old like stock old guy that's like smiling. I don't know yes. how else to explain it, but yep. it's him and it's all like, you know, I'm a freelancer. Like I don't work nine to five. I work 24 seven or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone yeah. just thinks that way. Um, I wanted to ask you about, I guess, stuff that's outside of a little bit work stuff. I've seen you playing like bass and I always see you interested in, in a lot of other things. And I like, that's why I feel like you're a interesting person to follow online because it's not just design. It's like there's a little more like, I don't know, like dimension to it or whatever. What other kinds of like hobbies and things do you do to like recharge from just being like a creative and designing all the time? Um, I've recently got really into like vintage shopping and like <laughs> scouring mm-hmm. Facebook marketplace. Um, and getting this apartment <laughs> yeah. was really nice because we've been like doing it, int- not interior designing, but like picking out stuff mm-hmm. that we really like and sort of designing the space, which is nice. Um, it's just a different form of like creative outlet, but I also just recently got like a bunch of like movie subscriptions so like i have a criterion collection subscription now um because i used to watch a lot of movies like my sophomore year of college was like all i was doing was watching movies and i really missed that um so i have like a bunch of movie subscriptions now i've been like trying to go Mm -hmm. to the movies more often um and just trying to intake different forms of art i guess and then unsuccessfully learning to play bass uh, the base is too big for me, so I have to try <laughs> to get a smaller one. Um, yeah, yeah, that Criterion know. shit. Uh, they always have like the dopest uh, art too, like the box sets and all that of like whatever movie you like. If you get the Criterion one, it's always like the coolest design stuff. Yeah, I like really want a bunch of Criterion DVDs, but now that I like have the collection, it's like kind of stupid for me to do do that they have their own like uh streaming thing now right is that what you're talking Mm -hmm. about but it's crazy i like just learned the other day that even though a movie is part of the criterion collection it doesn't mean it's on the criterion channel things come and go and i'm like that doesn't Mm. make any sense if it's part of the collection it's just like netflix or any of the other ones i'm like that makes no sense if it's part of the collection it should stay on the streaming service yeah (laughs) now i have to be worried about david lynch moving like the next month to a different streaming yeah, platform like a whole like, director just leaving that that's yeah. like a big hit do you um what's it called uh do you use that letterbox app or is that what's called i do i am a uh a long time user of letterbox actually i started uh using it in 2015 can you explain it real quick because i don't fully know yeah. and i'm sure a lot of people don't know listening so so you can uh, log movies that you watched and you can either just log it and like write a quick review mm-hmm. um, or you can add it to your film diary. You can make lists, kind of like movie lists. Um, you can follow people. Uh, it's Is it pretty similar much, to like how, it. you know, Discogs? Is it a similar in yeah. a way? But like the whole point of logging a movie is to rate it out of five stars and like mm write something about it but usually there's like two groups of people it's like people who write really in-depth reviews and like are very serious about the movies they watch and then people who write like stupid meme one-liners yeah i've seen the meme um, ones <laughs> i like both uh yeah. when i first got letterbox like five or six years ago like that's all i did was like write these really in-depth long stuff because i was like taking a bunch of film classes like yes i know what i'm talking about i know what i'm doing and now mm-hmm. i seriously will write like one word like two words um yeah. But it tells you like how many films you've logged this year, how many films you've logged to- total. It'll show you like the bar of like your ratings mm-hmm. and how it looks like from one star to like five. And oh, that's it's cool. cool. And it's kind of like, is it uh, have like a social media aspect to it in that way? Kind of. I mean, you can follow other people. You can look at their lists, what they've mm, watched. Okay. Um, you can't really, I don't think you can message people. You can comment on the reviews, but 
um, it's mostly yeah, like I've, a I've, organizational thing, kind of like Pinterest kind of. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've just mostly seen, yeah, like the meme ones or whatever, like a screenshot of it on Twitter yeah. or something. Someone saying something you don't really think is funny or whatever. If you watch yeah. the movie, I feel like it's just become like trying to get the Reddit like upvote, like top comment on a movie review basically. Yeah. But um, that's cool. And that was kind of all I had for the normal section of the podcast. And if you guys want to hear a little bit more, I know we said uh, we don't like giving too much advice. However, we do have a Q&A little thing that we're going to do for the Patreon. Um, is there anything before we get out of here you want to promote or plug or talk about? Do I have anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's fine. You don't need anything. Yeah. Thank you again. And it's, um, let's see, Julia Fletcher Studio on Instagram. And then what else you got? TikTok, right? Alt something. Alt Miss Frizzle. It? Yeah. There yeah. You go. All right. Well, thank you. And thank you again. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, of course. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.